Survivor specialist Phil and Alexa are back with another one of our season 40 winter retrospectives. And today we are joined by Survivor legend who is wearing a Shane Powers t-shirt. <laughs> Lex, <laughs> Lex Vandenberg from Survivor Africa and Survivor All-Stars. We're calling it the Amber Mariano episode this is going to be probably 90 percent ethan zahn <laughs> but we're calling it the amber mariano episode because lex you know you were you're an integral part to amber winning that game oh. so we're definitely gonna have to talk about that not to bring up the past <laughs> but that's what we plan on doing for the next 45 minutes hour hour and a half however long this goes so thank you so much for coming on we're super i excited. am so honored to be here with podcast legends phil and alexa so it's <laughs> you know respect Thank you. I wish I would have gotten the Shane Powers shirt though. This way we all could have yeah, like mad. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what. I respect, respect, and uh, and I just have to represent my my boy Shane. He is my soul brother, and uh, and this shirt I think this is the classic Shane Powers tee. Um, yeah. And and I wear it every chance I get, and people always ask me, well, "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> well, it would be great if you styled your hair to fit his the exact same way. <laughs> That would, it would be, we'd be like some kind of weird totem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cigarette, just fa unlit cigarette hanging out of your mouth the entire podcast. I'm sure that'd be great, right? I love it. I need, to, I need to go and find one right now. Yeah. yeah. Just okay. run out of the room. When you come back, we'll get back to it. <laughs> but, but this, this one is super exciting because before we went live, Alexa and I were kind of just going off about what how old we were when we were watching lex and lex was lex was my favorite back in survivor africa i was nine years old watching lex play survivor africa and my parents were really excited that i was like a huge fan of lex they just told me i was never allowed to get as many tattoos as you. Like, that, was, that was like my introduction into don't get too many tattoos but yeah lex is really really cool so i'm, I'm like the gate the gateway drug to uh people getting too many tattoos you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what's you know what's funny about that phil um I remember when when I got the phone call from Prost uh, when he wanted to tell me that uh, he wanted to ask me if I if I was up for playing Survivor All Stars, and um, so he called me on my on my cell phone and he said, "Hey, uh, you know, I just wanted to call and see if you're interested in doing we're we're going to do this season with returning players. It was the first time ever." And he says, "You know, we we ran these focus groups nationwide." And he says, I was shocked because they ran these focus groups to find out essentially out of the first, what was it, seven seasons, who were the, who were the favorite players? Um, and what, what was each of these players like? What was their demographic? Who is it that loved these players? And he said, you know, I was shocked that, well, he says, I wasn't shocked that you were a favorite player, but he, was, he says, I was shocked to who was your demographic? And and I just said, well, who's who? Who are the people that love me? I'd love to know. And he says, you you uh, rated stronger and higher than anyone else with little kids and old people. Wow. No middle ground. <laughs> and, right, right. I mean, the, yeah, the middle. You know, the people in the middle are still. Like, the way I look at, it, they're probably still so jaded that they still kind of like they're judgy and they see people. They read a book by its cover. But the way I I would like to think that it was something. About, about little kids haven't gotten jaded or screwed up by you know the world yet right so when they see you know, freaky tattooed guy they're like well that guy's got pretty colors and pictures all over him <laughs> he seems cool and and old people are like well you know i've been around the block and i know that you don't judge a book by its cover and well that guy seems you know that guy played a legit game or he was he was loyal or he was you know he was kind to other people he's a family guy you know he's not he's not what a lot of people jump to the conclusion that I am, and, and but I, I thought that was so cool. That was like such a gift that Probst shared with me. That he says, "Yeah, you know, these these two groups of people. You you were the guy for these two groups of people. And if I could handpick which group of people I would want to be most popular with, it would be those two groups. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. And and with the kids, I remember like you know, this was when everybody watched Survivor and I was at a birthday party on the Thursday night when it was on and it was the hot air balloon ride. Uh, oh. episode. And, and everyone there was rooting for you, which is crazy though, when you think about it, because Ethan ends up winning that season and Ethan was also so insanely popular with kids. And it's crazy yeah. that the two of you were so popular with like the same demographics in the same season and were allied the entire time. And then yep. you have big Tom, who I think every kid, I mean, 
when I say like Big Tom, Ethan, or Lex, if you watch any Survivor, you know exactly who we're talking about. Right. I think you you just struck that chord with people. And I and I would I would argue, and of course I'm super biased, but I would argue that um we had prob the three of us had one of the tightest and most special alliances I think in the history of the game. It mm. was you know we were and and it you know it stands to this day. I'm actually um day after tomorrow I'm getting on a red eye Friday night. And every year I go and I spend two or three weeks working on Big Tom's farm. It's what I do every year. And on Friday night, I'm taking my son and I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to, I'm going to work cattle with Big Tom and we're just going to bro down. And, and I, I look so forward to that because he's, I mean, Big Tom is like, he's family and his whole family is family to me. Um, and that all started in, in the most unlikely scenario on a, in a little game played in, of all places, Kenya and Africa. And, and I honestly think that they probably put Big Tom and I on the same tribes so that we kill each other or nearly kill each other, thinking that there's no way these two freaks would ever get along. And yet, you know, within before we even hit the sundown day one, Tom and I had an alliance. It was like it was day one. We, we were locked and loaded. Yeah. And that was that was back in the day when Survivor used to do like, hey, people from all over the country oh, instead of like way. instead of like 10 people from Los Angeles, six from New York. And then like, hey, there's Gavin or Nick. And, <laughs> and it was just this freak. It was just this freak show parade of weirdos because you look at the Africa cast. It wasn't, you know, not too many of us were fit to like have a, a career after Survivor's models or anything. We were just a lot of normal, ordinary people. It was the good, the bad and the ugly. There were certainly some good looking great looking people out there but you look at the whole cast and it just it was such a mishmash it felt like um you know they really took a slice of of like america they they tried to hit like all the all the different kind of types of people and we found ourselves in this crazy mix and we had to make it work yeah yeah and and it, it it's it's shown a lot you know with the baran tribe especially right baran no you were baran it was yeah. Sambu Sambu-ru. Is that what it was called? Yes, yeah, Sam yeah, Sambu Sambuhu. Sambuhu. <laughs> that, that was the tribe that it was really shown. Because my favorite thing that Survivor has ever done is do millennials versus Gen X and tell us Gen X worked so hard and they did blah 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 and blah 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 in season 33. And in season three, Silas and Lindsay and Brandon and Kim Powers <laughs> are considered the laziest people of all time. Gen X don't do anything. They're so and I love how Survivor's been on so long yeah. <laughs> that the entire story has shifted and we're supposed to just forget that like the young people on that side, I mean, Lindsay, especially, I mean, I wish she would have played. I wish they would do a pre-merge season and Lindsay. Rick She's Lindsay's <laughs> amazing. And I, I, I mean, I see her at least once or twice a year. Um, she's, she's, she's amazing. And she would still be unbelievable TV today. Mm -hmm. She's changed in a lot of ways, you know, I mean, she's grown and matured, but Oh, she would still be brilliant television. It's it's a shame she matured though, because that was. The best <laughs> <laughs> I wish she hadn't. Um, but we're we're gonna talk all about Ethan, of course. But we're calling this the Amber episode. And now that we've had this little flashback to Africa, I said this to you again right before we went live. You were my guy going into All Stars, Lex. You were my guy going into All Stars. I'm and sorry. Just did, I'm so sorry yeah, again. It, it just it didn't work out. Yet. <laughs> what, what I think is going to be amazing about this all winter season is we're going to have new like new fans because a lot of our fan base too they're younger maybe 15 16 17 even younger than that maybe who have only been watching since maybe season 25 season 30 something like that and they go back and watch them all their seasons so i don't think people are going to understand maybe like the impact of like amber and ethan on the actual game of survivor right and the decision that lex made Back in Survivor All Stars, because I was there for it, and everybody. I wish we had the clip like they do at the reunion, where it's just like, <laughs> here it is. But it's it's crazy because I think like a lot of, you know, fans like us who have been there since day one are gonna be like, oh my god, like let's hear it. But there's some people who are just aren't gonna understand like how big that moment really was for the Ooh. show. It was it was huge, and um, it was huge in ways that um fans will never know actually, mm -hmm. um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you could, you could make the argument that I was the equivalent with that move. I was kind of the Cupid to Rob and Amber and not for all the reasons you might think, but 
something that people don't know is that Ethan and Amber dated. Did you know that? They dated before the that season, right? Correct. Yeah. They so weren't they, dating though when it was on. No. Okay. <laughs> but um they, you know, they didn't they they didn't at that point it was kind of, you know, the the survivor, all the cast and the alumni, it was a very small bowl of soup. Now that you've got, I don't know what, 400 people or whatnot, but it was a, it was a pretty intimate little group of people. And, um, you know, and, and there were people that were single. Sometimes they would just, you know, come and go in each other's lives. And, you know, and, and Ethan and Amber, actually, they, they were romantically involved. And when they parted ways, it wasn't necessarily, it, was, it wasn't a terrible thing or anything. They, they just, they just kind of stopped dating. Um, but if you go, if you do the math, if, if I had gotten rid of Amber when I should have, which is as soon as she joined my tribe, mm -hmm. she would have been the last member of the pre-jury to go away and not go to Ponderosa. And she would have actually, they, they took, they had two groups of people. So the very first group of people voted off, went off. I think for All-Stars, they went to, I think they went to Patagonia. Then the second group went to some little tiny middle of nowhere fishing village in Mexico. Very romantic. Mm -hmm. And that was a group of, I don't know, maybe four or five survivors, something like that. So Amber would have been in this little fishing village for weeks with who? Ethan Zahn. Correct. Wow. <laughs> and they, dollars to donuts, they would have hooked back up. I would, I would bet the farm on it. And there would have been no royal wedding. <laughs> so as Cupid, I would like to think that you've received some cut of the three million dollars between Ethan, Amber, and Rob. Funny you should ask that, Alexa. <laughs> um, I was actually just hoping for a thank you card. <laughs> and I, I didn't get a thank you card. But, well, but yeah, we'll that, write you a that, thank you card. Thank you. But that would have <laughs> talk about talk about how um life is so strange and it and and it's just the, the the roads that you know the roads that kind of crisscross and lead to each other and, and the things that happen that lead to other things it could have been such a different life for everybody now you know it could have been that if I'd gotten rid of Amber at that point yes yeah, she and uh, Ethan would have gotten together that that's I think pretty much foregone conclusion it means Rob and Amber never would have been Rob might have still won the game I, you know it's hard to tell hard to say um, or I could have won the game it could have you know it could have gone a million different ways but the simple fact that 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 uh, you know we made the decision not to uh, eighty six Amber when we should have changed not just you know the course of the game and whatnot but you know it changed the course of like so many lives personally it's because for us you know game survivor it's like this it's been argued so many times and debated by people um, you know survivor just a game or is survivor like life well for those of us who are out there playing. It's it's our for those thirty nine days, and then for all the days afterwards when we become so much fodder for everyone to either make memes of or comment on or whatever. It's our real life. It's you know we're not we're not characters. We're not you know we're not cartoon characters or anything. It's this is this is our real life. And yes, it's a game, but it's also real life. And that illustrates in in such kind of you know just real terms how much it is about life it's you know it led mm -hmm. to a led to a marriage which is now you know they got four girls you know four daughters i mean it's like a lot a lot came out of that you know strange you know series of events right and 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 we're recording this in june but i'm <laughs> saying this after season 39 airs for anybody who's looking for somebody to blame for the boston rob statue Lex is right oh. here. Oh, and that, that <laughs> Talk just, to us about the statues. You just, you just, you hurt me where it counts. <laughs> um, I was absolutely, when they, when, when they showed, when, when they had that reveal <laughs> shot on the beach from the drone or the helicopter with the, with the giant, like, uh, Planet of the Apes statues mm -hmm. coming out of the sand, I was absolutely fucking mortified mm -hmm. i was actually embarrassed for sandra and rob like if i was in their shoes and and that and they pulled that on me 
And I found out about that when that went to air. I'd be like, wait a second. Are you kidding? But mm -hmm. I don't know. I Do you guys like the statues? I hate Absolutely the statues. Absolutely not. I, no. I, it mortifies me. And, and I hate that they've... Um, I feel like that if there was ever a jump the shark moment in what that'll be 38 seasons, that to me is when you hear the sound of the Fonz's motorcycle going mm -hmm. right over the shark. It's those, those two statues and, and bringing in, you know, these, you know, consultants that will supposedly be living on an Island, which we know they won't be living on an Island. They'll, <laughs> they'll be, you know, probably yeah. in the resort with the, with the crew and whatnot. But, um, I just I, I hate the I, I hate everything about the idea. I hate I hate the idea that um that there are two people out there that somehow have something really valuable to share with players. I, I like here's the, the beauty of Survivor for me, and one of the things that I miss about the old school and the old days is that back then, you know, we were babies. We we knew nothing. We, you know, even though there'd been a couple seasons, we were still inventing our own game of Survivor. We were creating our own strategies and we didn't have a playbook to go by. We just, we were out there and we were, we were ignorant and, um, and trying to figure out how to make it work. And to me, that's, that's singularly the most interesting thing about watching Survivor is watching these 16 or 18 or 20 people having their comfort zone pushed to the ultimate in a, in this impossible situation where there can only be one winner, where the stakes are so high, it's a million dollars. You don't, you're separated from your family and friends for, you know, virtually, you know, almost two months or a month, you know, yeah, a month and a half and, and watching them sort it out and figure it out. And when you put in these people that are like going to be, you know, consultants and no, that's, there's nothing fun about that. Let these people figure it out. And, and frankly, and you know, with the new school, and since we're so many seasons in now, you see that everybody basically comes with. I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to play kind of a Parvati uh, hybrid with um, Cochrane strategy or whatnot. There's, there's, there's very little that's that's yet to be completely discovered from you know, from scratch, um, and and then they, you know, the fact that they throw in so many gimmicks now. Um, idols and special islands that do different things. Um, I think that that also it, it, these are these are ways for people to kind of game the system. When, when you when you're given nothing but your own your mind, your resourcefulness, your body to win challenges and build shelter and get food and your social skills, and the only other thing you have is two challenges, one reward, one immunity. And then it's tribal council and there's nothing else. Well, you learn things about people and it really, it just peels all the onion layers off and all of us are just exposed and raw and we have to figure shit out. And that to me is, it's that, that was the interesting kind of psychological and social experiment was being able to watch season after season for those first you know, maybe 10 or 12 seasons, maybe a little bit more, watching people really try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. on their own with nothing to work with except for a machete, their mind, their social game, and and their brawn. And that to me is just, that's the fascinating part of it, right? Yeah. And it was probably up until Guatemala because that was the first time that we had the advisors where Bobby, John, and Stephanie come right back. And, and they're kind of showing people around. And that was a big thing on 38. I mean, Eric and Gavin would go on so many walks where it's like, I don't want them here. Like they're taking right. away from us building this and, yes. and doing all that stuff. Now, like, my, how dare you? Yeah, it, exactly. Get off, my, get off my fucking island. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. And now you're being told like, you, hey, won, you guys won three times between the two of you. Yeah. My turn, right? That's what, that's why it's like, I think that. I, I feel like the franchise should be really, really selective about when they bring alumni back. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've been, I think they've been a little too liberal with just let's bring back, you know, previous players. And honestly, that's not as interesting to me as a fan. I like it when I'm seeing somebody that's like, Oh, holy shit. What, where am I? What do I do? Um, rather than, you know, a re, you know, just recycled player from before.
And, and a lot of the people like, you know, not to speak for anybody, but they've been pretty open about it. Like Aubrey's burnt out, Wentworth's burnt out, like because they played what three times in the matter of eight seasons. Oh, yeah. right. Now, you guys back back in the day, you had season eight, season 11 and season 16. Those are the only three okay. seasons in the first 16 seasons that had returning players of any kind. So it was like a. Okay, who was memorable enough? Like fair play coming back for 16 after not playing since seven. Like, wow, that's yeah. a pretty big jump. You know, who was going to be brought back from season one and two? And you guys didn't know there were going to be three tribes and all that stuff. So, yeah, I do agree. And, and it puts a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth now, knowing that 39 has Robin Amber or Robin Amber, <laughs> Robin Sandra with their statues, and then they're playing 40. We have yeah, three seasons yeah. in a row of returning players, right? In some capacity. I mean, enough. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're not. You know, I mean, we're, I know we're not here to just talk about all that stuff. I keep derailing you. <laughs> That's totally fine. Hey, it's bringing up the question that I want to ask, which is, you you said, you know, it was just us. We had the immunity challenge. We had the reward challenges. That was it. We were developing a strategy. Ethan and Amber both have not played. Yeah. Since an individual or since a hidden immunity idol was introduced into the yes. game, yes. how do you think that each of them do? You know, talk about one and then the other. You know. Ooh, um, well, it's it's going to be the 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 big. I think the biggest hurdle for both of them is going to be how they adapt and adjust to new school survivor. Unless, of course, um, and I would, God, I would, I would thank the survivor gods, but unless, of course, Probes decides um, that that this season of all winners is going to be completely stripped down to old school with no idols, no funny business, no special oh, I islands. That. I would love that, right? But that's unlikely. Um, but the thing that's going to be the biggest challenge for them is is how they adapt from being old school players to playing new school survivor. And it's not just the gimmicks, but also back when we played, um, there was, there was something, it was incredibly difficult to, um, to play this deeply human game and, and to just be, uh, unapologetically, unemotional about everything right back then when you made a promise when you made an alliance when you shook someone's hand it was really you'd find yourself at that at that fork in the road where you would have to say man i either if i want my game to go longer i have to backstab this person and it was for me and i know for ethan and and i think for probably a lot of us it was really it was a it was a sophie's choice it was a really difficult decision um it was it was brutally hard to do that whereas now i think New school players, they there's no such thing as a true alliance. It's like it's an alliance. Alliances are like Bic razors or toothbrushes. Mm -hmm. They're they last a day or two or three, um, and nobody would fault you for, you know, just hopping from one alliance to the other. It's expected, right? Mm -hmm. It's expected that um, that people will be playing their own game and they won't be loyal to anybody. But back then, like you know, when you made when you made an alliance or you made a promise, um, it was it was emotionally it was it was torture when you knew that you had to break someone's heart. And now there's no there's no feelings anymore, right? And people now are like, this, this survive is not about feelings. It's about you know one person can win, and we're all here to play the game. And it has it has morphed into this thing where it used to be this is like life for us. To now it's like no question, it's just a game. It is just a game. Nobody walks away with hurt feelings. I mean, sometimes they do because we're all human beings. But for the most part, people feel that they have license to play the game. Anything goes, right? And mm -hmm. we're not gonna we're not gonna fault you for that. Um, so that's gonna be tough for Amber and Ethan as well. I think especially for Ethan, um, just to be really able to just be, you know, emotionless about all that stuff. And and I think you know for someone like Ethan, that's that's gonna be a tough. I think he one of his strengths is that he can connect really well with people. But if you know you you have to pick one or the other, you can't really truly connect with somebody and then just screw them the next day or two days later. Um, I think that uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be hard for them. Now, what I think is going to work for them is that um, 
they will be, they'll have this kind of cloak of slight invisibility about them because A, it was a million years ago. People don't really, well, some people remember, but a lot of people don't, you know, it's, it's, it was a long time ago. So I think they'll be able to, if they play an under the radar game, which frankly, that's, that's always been both of their strategy. They, neither of them have ever been players that really got in the driver's seat and really made decisions or big moves. They had other people doing it for them. Um, and so do you have any names for, for one of them, <laughs> you know, do you got a name for one of the people who's making the big moves maybe in Africa? Well, I mean, no, no I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I was, I was both, um, depending on who you talk to, I was loved or hated for being the guy that, that made pretty much all the big decisions. And, and that was because I was, I mean, I was young, I was younger. Um, I was a bit of a control freak. I was definitely accused of being Machiavellian about the whole game. And some people hated me for that. They, they're like, how, you know, what is this your game? How dare you, you know, control everything and feel like you've got, you know, that you've got control of everything and you're the only person in the driver's seat. But I went in there without really thinking about it ahead of time, but my own nature at the age of 35 got the better of me. And that was, I was, I was, you know, just pathologically alpha. Um, I just, I wanted it, I wanted, I didn't want, I didn't want my game to be at the mercy of anyone else's decision. I wanted to know that if I, if I won or if I died, it was 100% because of me. And, and that's how I felt comfortable. And, you know, and Tom time and again, and after the fact, he said, you know, he, he warned me, he says, you know, if you're going to, if you want to ride the, the white horse out in the front of the pack, well, you're the one that they're going to be shooting arrows at. Yeah. And, and you know what? He's right. And that's why every single time we went to tribal council that I didn't have an immunity necklace around my neck, um, you know, people were gunning for me. I, I had to scramble because they, every time they, they knew they needed to get rid of me. So yeah, in Africa, here's the thing, Ethan, Ethan was, you know, I, I, and not, I, don't, I don't want this to come off as like I did all the things and I'm, I'm taking all the credit or I'm, I was some kind of mastermind. No, I just... I, I happen to be pretty lucky that I made some of the decisions and choices um, that I made. But I'll, I'll be I'll be totally honest with you. The, the moment we were in the game, I had zeroed in on Tom. I wanted Tom to be my number one alliance because I could tell he was a guy who was salt of the earth. I knew that the handshake would mean something with him. He had a son. I had two sons. We were about the same age. I'm like, this guy's, you know, yeah, he's a redneck, and I'm, you know, this Santa Cruz liberal tattooed skateboard weirdo but i knew that we would connect and so i'm like that's the guy i'm i'm, I'm gonna make alliance with him and then frankly ethan was my number two choice and i and i chose him and when i when i went to tom and said you know how'd you like to do an alliance he's all well, what the hell's an alliance <laughs> and i explained it to him and he says well that sounds like a handshake agreement to me and i'd like to do that and so you know that first day we had we had a deal and it was made and it was to the end of the game and Basically, the deal is going to be whoever's in our alliance, we're true to each other, and then when it's just the rest of us, it's bones to bones, we slug it out, and the best man wins. Yeah. Well, the next day, I mean, I and I told Tom, I said, you know, I, I really want to bring Ethan into the fold, and he said, okay, well, let's, you know, let's talk to him. And so we talked to him the next day, and Ethan was, Ethan is, I, I adore Ethan, and we're still very, very close. We still talk on the regular all the time, um, but Ethan is a... And this is going to be the thing, and I'll, and I'll preface this by saying, if I had one person that I would wish wins season 40, it's Ethan, because he's my boy, and I, I love Ethan. He's my brother. So I want, I want Ethan to win. Uh, he's, got, he's got a tough road ahead of him, though, um, and one of the things that's going, to, that's going to bite him in the ass if he hasn't figured it out, but in Africa and in All-Stars, and honestly, it's, it's kind of he's carried it. So like, he is a creature of mass paranoia. He's very, very paranoid. Um, he just has trust issues mm -hmm. and he always, I mean, he's always just really just, he's wiggly and, and, and is always, he's just mistrustful and, and just paranoid. And he'd, he'd be the first to tell you that. And so when I approached him on that day two in Africa, I said, I want to make alliance with you, Tom, you and me till the end. And he said, well, um, you know, 
that sounds good, but I, I think I'd like to spend a little time and kind of feel, feel, you know, just feel out the playing field a bit more and get to know people. And, you know, and I said, that's totally fine, fully valid. You have until sundown tonight. Once that sun hits the horizon, the, the deal's off the table. Doesn't mean I won't work with you, but you will not be in our alliance ever. And that's just the deal. I mean, it's like this is – I'll find somebody else and I will have – because I wanted three. I just wanted three of us, and then I wanted sub-alliances that we could kind of manipulate and then pitch, you know, pitch to the side when, when it came time. But I wanted us to be a nimble three-person alliance because that's just, just enough people to manage without it getting all fucking hairy down the road, right? And, and, and what's so amazing about what you just said is if Ethan says that on season 40 – He's getting voted out like immediately because that's how much Survivor has changed. <laughs> that's exactly right. So yeah. um, rewinding back to Africa that day, um, he was, you could see he was just like, oh God, what, what do I do? What do I do? The pressure's on. I got to do something. You could see him like the wheels turning. And right before the sun went down, he came to me and Tom and said, I'm in. Mm -hmm. And that was that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he, it almost, his paranoia almost got the best of him. And, and if, if I had a word of caution to him, if I could tell him like what, what to do and what not to do, I would tell him, dude, you need to just commit and just go for things and don't be, don't be so doubtful. Don't doubt everyone and everything. It's good to be skeptical um, and to really think things through and, and look at the possibilities. But to, paranoia, it's, we all get paranoid out there. It's, it is just, it rots your brain out. But if you go into the game on day one, already paranoid before everyone else has a chance to get paranoid because of the game, well, you, you're, you've got a handicap. It's already working against you. And do you think in this season, they'll both kind of fall into that same path where they'll align with a really strong strategist and take more of that backseat social kind of game or do you think because this is such new territory they'll come out either playing really strategically or really loudly or taking a different route i think the smartest move for them would be to find somebody that that is really strategic and really alpha and mm -hmm. to kind of hide behind them because i don't think that you can see survivor again it, it strips everything all of the surface stuff and and it exposes us for who we are and you cannot change it's you know there's that old expression you can't can't take the spots off the off the leopard it's you know you, you can you, you can pretend to be something you're not but it, it, you know at the end of the day we are all you know we have our own nature on the inside and you can't go from being somebody who's not um you know kind of naturally somebody that tends to take the driver's seat and lead and just decide today i'm going to be a leader mm -hmm. um you know it just doesn't work that way you can try but you probably will fail um, I think going into Survivor and realizing what your strengths and what your weaknesses are and playing to both of those is the smartest way to go. And frankly, I don't think someone like Ethan or Amber are cut out to be like driver's seat, aggressive, you know, super alpha kind of super strategic players. I think that their strength is, is actually in hiding a little bit. Um, sharing their wit, you know, their smarts and, and what they see around them, but um, but having somebody else take the fall for them or take the heat for them, because you know, frankly, I mean, that's what they both they both did exactly that in Africa and All Stars. Mm -hmm. You know, Amber, she was brilliant in that all of the blood was on Rob's hands. You know, he and he was not he had no problem having that blood on his hands. And frankly, in Africa, all the blood was on my hands and. I all, I also didn't give a shit about having the blood on my hands. I was like, you know what? I'm this is this is how I play. This is who I am. You know, dig it or f off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just I, I don't know how to be anything else. Um, and I tried going into All Stars. I really, I tried. I I went into it, and and I remember it was. It's just it's painful to remember. But we had like four or five days of press junket interviews before the game started while we were in Panama. Mm -hmm. And so People Magazine's there and TV Guide and all these magazines, you know, all these press people are there. And they all asked the same question. How are you going to change your game? Because it was the first time anybody was returning. And they're all, are you going to do anything different? And I was like, I mean, I was just shooting my mouth off saying, oh yeah, no one's ever going to see me coming. They, 
they saw me play a game where I was loyal to a fault and and I never wavered on that. And I'm gonna be the liar, the backstabber. I'm good and I honestly in my mind I believed that I would actually that I would actually be able to pull that off. And the day we hit the beaches, I was like, Yep, that ain't gonna work. Because I because <laughs> I, I knew I'm like, oh, I can only now that I'm in this game, I can only be myself. I can't, it's like trying to. You know, when you've got a, a vomit reflex, it's like, you know, when you're when you know you're about to upchuck, it's like trying to will yourself not to puke. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't work that way. If you're gonna puke, you're gonna puke. And it's I was like out there, I I was I was feeling like this is like trying to suppress a puke that has to come out. I, mm -hmm. I can't physically do that. So yeah, I and sure enough, that's exactly how my story you know my storyline and my arc ended up on all stars it was incredible analogy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so but but to to turn it to to amber because amber's coming in with added baggage that ethan isn't and that's the fact that Physical her baggage. yeah her well her husband <laughs> may or may not be like you know what five times he's about to go out there and and now he has a statue and you know he played four times before he won but the redemption island you know you could say what you want about redemption island it was just like a dominant performance and one of the most boring seasons of all time let's so, not even yeah this, like, we but, don't need to go but, there <laughs> but how much does that hurt her because realistically if boston rob isn't there does anybody see amber as a threat um, you know, I guess it kind of depends on your point of view, but, um, you know, I, if I was in the game, I would see them as a package deal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't think she can wash the stink of Boston Rob off of her. Um, they are, you know, they're married and they've, you know, they've got between the two of them, they've got two wins. They've been on a ton of shows. They've, you know, everybody knows they've, they've done very well for themselves and, um, and, and who wouldn't want to, who, who, who wouldn't want to be the ones to, to take them out? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I would, you know, if I was in that game, I would be approaching things as, you know, in terms of threat level, but also, you know, who do I want? It, who would be fun for me to shank? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that would be, that'd be half the fun as well. I mean, you know, I, I won't lie there. I, I've taken great pleasure in some of the people that I was able, you know, that I was able to orchestrate, you know, they're, they're out, it's, you know, and, and half the fun was, seeing them walk just mm -hmm. because I knew that I got to be part of it. <laughs> and, and I wonder if some of the new school people will feel that way because, you know, when you look at this, like Ethan and Sandra and Amber coming back, like Yule, that's where everybody's like, Oh my God, they're coming back. This is amazing. Nobody's really like, Ooh, Adam Klein's coming back. Can't wait. Yeah. Like, Oh, right. Michelle's coming right. back. Can't wait. Nobody cares all that much so i wonder if they're going to be the ones who are like i can be the person well i guarantee you the, 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 yeah the new school people i guarantee you are are thinking to themselves wouldn't it be great to just level mm -hmm. all the old schoolers in, right in the beginning and just show them how the game is played you know we'd all be lying everyone who's ever played survivor would be lying if they told you that they didn't have some you know level of ego we all have you know all of us you don't go on a tv show like that without having you know an ego and and part of that is you know you want you you know the new schoolers and the old schoolers have they they've got their you know they they've got their own feelings about you know what's the better what's what's the better school Mm -hmm. and and who they you know love to take out and i guarantee the old schoolers are like God, i i really would love and I, if I was out there, I'd, that's the first thing I want to do is show, you know, show these new schoolers that, that there is still validity to the old school game mm -hmm. um, or that we can adapt and we can play the new school game just as well as they can, even though we didn't do it ourselves back in the day. Mm -hmm. Do you see, so do you see them mostly aligning with the, I guess the older school half or do you think? I hope not. Yeah. I mean, I really, it if has, I was, it has to mix up. And, and if I was, if I happened to be out there, um, in a, in a, in a return season with, you know, a mix of old and new school, I mean, the first thing I would do is I would find new school people to be friends with. Um, that is the very first, I do that before I even, you know, reconnect with any, with any old school people. Cause that's, that's, you know, the sooner you do that, the, the, the tighter the bond you have, you've got to let that, 
glue set between you, that social glue um, to where, you know, because I mean, frankly, at, at the end of the day, every three days you go to tribal council, the thing that makes it hardest to write someone's name down is when you're close to somebody. That's, I don't care if you're old school or new school, it is not easy for anybody to write a name down to somebody that they like or that likes them back and that they feel that they've made a social connection with. So that's, that's always the secret sauce is, you know, get close to people, mm -hmm. love them, make them love you. Yeah. Because, because I mean, that's Adam always says like when he wins 10, nothing over Hannah and Ken, it was like, they, like he said to us, if you don't think, if you think you can go out on survivor and not make friends and win, you never win. It's you bone simple. It's just bone <laughs> simple. We're all human beings. And even it, as much as we try to, you know, to, to check that at the door when we play survivor, we are all just human beings. And, and out there, especially when we have no friends or family, we crave human connection. It's mm -hmm. just human. And, and that stuff can be, you know, some people will exploit it. Some people will leverage it. I think there's a difference. I think like in Boston, Rob, you got somebody that has no problem exploiting it. And, and you know what? Good on him because that makes him a better player than someone like me mm -hmm. that I couldn't exploit it. But I'll definitely, I'll leverage it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and now do you think that like, I was like, I was, I was going to bring this up because I know like some of our fans might not exactly know, but like in the seasons that Ethan and Amber have played, there was like one vote away from it being a Pagongi where like there was that one big Alliance. And then it kind of just took care of the other Alliance. It was the Baran Alliance with the exception of Kelly Goldsmith. It was the, um, what it was the, the Colby and Tina Alliance with the exception of Jerry, you know? So, and then in all stars, it was the Chapira, Chapira, whatever Alliance yeah. over, you know, Mogo go go. I can never remember the names of the tribe. Like you know, it's go go. You know, it's funny. I don't even remember myself. <laughs> yeah, you were on the green tribe. That's as much as I remember. But do you think that, like, if if Ethan gets into an alliance, do you think he might settle a bit, or do you think he's going to be able to adapt enough where he's like, okay, I know I need to be able to bounce around a little bit, or do you think he's going to try to play kind of the way that it worked for him? in those first two seasons or the way he saw it work for the winners in his season? That's a great question. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, only watching him play is going to, is going to really provide the answer. I, I would really love to think that he's going to be able to kind of dodge and parry and adapt, you know, more than maybe he had to in the past. Um, you know, he, he made an attempt to kind of change things and adapt in all stars, but frankly, it was just, it was, it wasn't, a, I, I don't think it was a very effective attempt. And, you know, it was when he, when he ended up on, on my tribe, I mean, he just said, here's the deal. Why don't you and me and Colby, will just do strong dudes mm -hmm. Alliance. And I'm like, is that, is that you, you're here for a few hours and that's all, you, is that all you got? Mm -hmm. There's like, mm -hmm. there's no, that's not clever or interesting at all. It's super obvious. And you didn't even think that I might have <laughs> alliances of my own now that I've been working with for a while. You're just like, you know, it's just it's a bit tone deaf. And, and, and you know, I've, been, I've been slammed for years now. I mean, how long has it been now? Like 13, 14 years. I've been 15, 15 years since All-Stars. I have been slammed so many times by people that, that want to say, you know, Lex is such a hypocrite because – what he blames Rob for, he did that exact same thing to Ethan in All Stars as well. And I mean, and I'll, I, I don't even feel like I need to set the record straight because it doesn't matter. It's, it's like it's old news. But I will say, you know, that's not the case simply because Ethan and I never made any kind of deal before we went out for All Stars. We didn't, you know, we didn't have a pregame alliance. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a pregame alliance with Tom because I did. Tom and I had a pregame alliance before we even went out to the game. But Ethan and I didn't. And part of that is because Ethan was so paranoid he didn't feel comfortable talking to me on the phone beforehand because Survivor had told all of us you're not to converse with other people. And, and I was like, well, fuck that. I'm, I'm going to call Big Tom right now because, yeah. because what, are you the boss of me? You're not the boss of me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but Ethan was like, no, I can't talk to you because um, I'm paranoid that maybe they have my phones tapped something oh so God. so wow. so ethan and i didn't make a pregame alliance or any deal of any kind so when he came to me on that beach and said yeah let's do this you know people are like wow you you betrayed ethan well no i didn't because 
A, um, we didn't make a deal. B, there can only be one winner. And frankly, you know, you're kind of, you're my best, you're one of my best friends, but you're my enemy in this game. Mm -hmm. And, and C, most of all, you already won. And all of us out there that went out to all stars, we all, everyone who was the non winner had kind of discussed ahead of time that winners were going period. Mm -hmm. It was, mm -hmm. and I know that's boring for people watching people like you, although it's not necessarily because a really good winner would somehow figure out a way out of that pickle. Right. So yeah. How much more fun is it to see, you know, a guy out in the Coliseum in a gladiator battle that has, you know, his right hand chopped off right before the battle starts. But what if that dude wins? Mm -hmm. Well, that's even better. Uh, now yeah, I want to go watch Gladiator so bad. You know? <laughs> Stab so, him in the side and he wins anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, you know, that's that's the thing. Um, you know, Ethan, I'm hoping that he brings a better game to season 40 than he brought to All-Stars because he didn't really bring very much of a game to All-Stars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I say that, uh, you know, I know Ethan's probably going to watch this and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'd say this to Ethan's face. I love him to pieces, but um, I really hope that he thought good and hard about what worked and didn't work in his past, you know, two first goes at it. Uh, I think, but I think he played a much better game in Africa than he played in all stars In all stars. I think he kind of had, he kind of had it. He wouldn't have to he could mm -hmm. coast a bit. And he probably figured that when he got, moved over to my tribe he's like oh perfect right i got my boy and i'm all set i can i can sit in that back seat again and kind of go for a ride for a while but that's not how it works mm -hmm. you know yeah. you you ate my lunch the first time buddy <laughs> ain't gonna leave ain't gonna let you eat my lunch the second time <laughs> exactly and and so with ethan we'll definitely talk more about ethan because he can he can get his footing in the game for sure now i want to talk yeah. about amber though because if Boston Rob, let's say Boston Rob gets voted off first, he gets 20th place on this season. Do you think that Amber has the potential to then go on a long run? She could. Deep in, yeah. Oh, she could. Sure. Um, if she if she has if she aligns with with a good good group of people, and she and, and I, I know she's really good at just you know running under the radar. I, I think she'll have no problem with that. Um, I think she could she could go pretty deep in the game. Mm -hmm. um, it all you know it's it's all going to depend on. I think it'll depend heavily on who she's playing with. Mm -hmm. You know you can't you you can't you can't play the game by yourself. Is there someone who sticks out to you as someone she can align with, like just out, out of the group that's in forty, excluding her husband? <laughs> um. I'm trying. I'm, I'm still trying to kind of. Uh, I'm trying to recall who all of the who all the folks are that are going yeah. out there. That's okay. We can. We so can. We list have it this. We've done now. this. <laughs> We've done this. Don't worry. You're not the first one to say. I'm trying to remember exactly who's out there. Um, all right. So looking at some of the older school players, you got yeah. uh, Danny Boatwright, uh, Ethan, obviously Sandra, who I'd still consider old school, even though she played 34. Yeah. Uh, Boston Rob, even though he won 22, he was, you know, more old school. Um, Yule, Parvati. Yep, yep. You know, do you see her like going that route? Or like I, Denise or Kim, they're 24 and 25. They're kind of like that middle tier. Well, I would, I would think that, you know, I mean, Rob and Amber are both, they, you know, they've made a career out of reality TV. Mm -hmm. um, whereas for a lot of us, you know, we watch it and we kind of, you know, I kind of casually watch it. I enjoy it and whatnot, but um, if you were to quiz me and ask me, you know, to tell you the names of people that have been on the last five, ten seasons, I, I would fail miserably. But um, I would think that a Amber is probably somebody that pro is probably very familiar with all of the seasons and all of the players. If I was her, I would definitely align with at least one old schooler. I, I would think that Sandra is a pretty darn good bet mm -hmm. um, as far as shields go because she's won twice and. I mean, she's she's certainly not kind of a front of the pack person. Parvati as well. Um, she's there's everything about her is threatening, um, easy to hide behind. But I but I think that um she would be smart to to also bolster that that group with some with some old school people. I I also get the sense that I mean I think Amber, um, I get a feeling that she she might work better with uh, male alliances. So um, 
I could see her maybe palling up with. I don't know. If, I, I don't remember. I sadly don't remember a ton about Yule's game. I know he played a very, very sharp game, but um, I, I, he doesn't strike me. My gut tells me he doesn't strike me as somebody that she would naturally gravitate towards. But um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because some of the newer guys, you know, Tyson, I feel like is somebody that if she starts on a tribe with, just because. Tyson and Rob have sort of a connection and she can hide behind Tyson. Good. You know, Tyson's a huge threat. I honestly think Tyson can be one of the most threatening people in this game because yeah. people remember that he lost twice more than they remember that he won once. That's right. That's right. You know? And, and, and he's, you know, he's delicious to watch because his just, he's, he, his tongue is his oh, own yeah. worst enemy and best friend. Um, I think, you know, there may be, there are some winners out there that, that were before they were winners, they were super fans and, if I was Amber, I would ex I would exploit that mm -hmm. because you know for, she is in in a lot of in a lot of people's minds she is reality royalty um, because of, you know she won she's married to Rob they've done amazing race they've they've done a lot of things and so um, there's something there that she could that she could use as you know as collateral and, and as a tool with some of the yeah. super fans that are winners. And and for anybody who's listening to this who hasn't watched the first 10 seasons somehow because you're like too young or whatever, go back and watch them in order and tell me after season two how the statement that Lex just made is truth. <laughs> how Amber ended up becoming reality royalty because in season two, she played that same under the radar game, but she never had her footing and she was overshadowed by Colby and 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 Tina and Jerry and Elizabeth and Rob. I mean, that whole cast is so ridiculous. And now she's the one who goes and wins, you know, all stars. And we're talking about as can she get out from the shadow of Boston Rob to go well, far? And game? here, and here's the thing that might be interesting is I feel like Amber's got a lot to prove in mm -hmm. season forty because you could still talk to everybody that was out there for season eight all stars and ask them if they think that Amber deserved to win, and you will get many different answers. There, there's the one camp of people that believe that she basically didn't do shit um, and that she just rode Rob's back piggyback the whole mm -hmm. way and that the reason she won is because there was a really bitter jury. There could be some truth to that. Um, you know, I mean, I'll, I will be totally honest. I, I, voted, I voted for Amber partially because I did not want to write Rob's name down. Mm-hmm. Because I wanted it, it was a fuck you to Rob for sure. Um, I also felt that you know Am Amber, the smartest move she made there was aligning herself with him and then just and then hiding for sure. I don't I don't know myself how much strategy she really came up with and how many moves she made or you know. And you could ask anybody out there, and some people will tell you that, yeah, she she did some stuff, and, and she and Rob worked in tandem as a team. And there are other people that will tell you that she didn't really do anything except for, um, you know, seduce him, court him, and then and then just get on his back and rode piggyback the whole way to the to the the final jury, where there were a bunch of people that just didn't want to see him win. So yeah. she has a lot to prove. She could if she goes. If he goes out early in season 40 and she goes deep, well, then we know that she's got a lot of – she had a lot of game in All-Stars. Um, but if she, you know, if she's worthless and, can't, and doesn't have really any game without somebody else kind of playing her game for her, then we know that she essentially was a uh, – you know, was, was just the lucky recipient of a million dollars season eight because too many people, more people hated – the person next to her then then you know and then liked her as somebody who voted for amber how do you want that to go like in your in your mind are you sitting here saying like i want her to do well because i want like to prove that like she did play really well on eight or do you like are you just kind of like eh, if she goes out early she goes out early no i would i would love to see her play really well mm -hmm. um and and i don't and again i don't think that would necessarily prove that she Played real well in All Stars, mm -hmm. but it would be great to see that she can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I, I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll be completely blunt and, and honest. I, I have zero hard feelings about All Stars or how things went down. Um, I, I shed that skin and let that go right after the finale of All Stars. You know, like what, 14, 15 years ago. 
I didn't look back. That's that was the game, and 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 I'm good with that. I'm good with Rob. I'm good with Amber. I've seen them both since then several times, and and I have no problem with that. But I I would like to see. I would like to know that. Um, it would be great to see her play well because I would like to think that everybody, all twenty of the people playing in season forty, deserve to be out there because of their game, and that's going to be something really interesting with season forty because. You know, you could argue that there's a pretty good percentage of winners that won not because of the way they played the game, but because of the situation they found themselves in when they were in final jury. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that and that they they won because of the people or the person that they were sitting next to and the jury that voted. Um, so, you know, and, and there there are certainly I, I think you can make a good argument that there are certainly some players that didn't play their way to the final jury. Um, you know, they either got carried or, you know, we're, we're just, we're, we're lucky. Luck plays a huge part in the game Survivor. But I would like to think that all 20 of these people are super deserving because they bring game to the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For pretty much all of these winners, Phil and I have been asking ourselves, were they the best player on the season that they won? <laughs> and, it's been really, no, and like, like, Kind of just like jokingly, but also like I know that's such a moving target in terms of what's a what's a good player, what's the best player on a season. Yeah. But it's been really interesting to see that that isn't necessarily the case for all twenty of these or for all almost 30, 39 seasons. I would say most of them because Alexa, yeah. I think I think the first one that we really like agreed on was the best player on their season was probably Yule, and well, even that one we weren't sure. Danny. We said we said Danny was. Danny was. Yeah, that's true. We did have Danny because but Rafe those were was the really only two. It was yeah. only those two. So far, we have to so we have far. to keep. Yeah, working. we've only like, made it to. Yeah, you know, especially in the new school game, a lot of the people like you know Adam. I always go back to Adam. He had to get rid of Jay and David before final three, or he loses. So yeah. he's not the best yeah. player on the season. Yes, he made the best moves because he did get rid of those people, put himself in a position where he would be the one to win, and he was never seen as the most threatening. But was he the best player on a season? Probably not, because Jay when and Adam both fight. would have beaten him. Yeah, in a landslide. Yeah, I, and I think that's a really interesting. It's a it's it's a really interesting question. Um, it, it all I guess depends on what your criteria is for best mm -hmm. player, and for some people, it's just sim simply the fact that you lasted the longest. Um, I would argue that that's kind of boring, um, and that for me, it should be you know a combination of all the things that kind of embody the outwit, outplay, outlast, you know, mantra of Survivor. And that's, you know, how are you in, in physical challenges? How are you in you know, mental challenges? How's your social game? Um, how's your strategy? Uh, you know, are you somebody that, you know, at least occasionally put, sticks your neck out? You know, or do you, or do you play the ultimate kind of snake in the grass, super sneaky game? These are all things that to me like that, the combination of all those things is what makes the most, not only the best player in my, but also the most interesting one to watch. And I would argue that at least in the older seasons, more often than not, the people that were um, ejected and, and voted out right before final, probably the third, fourth, fifth place, they were the ones that went deep in the game, but that people knew, damn it, we got to get rid of these people these people and and that's i always think when when people do a who's the best player to never win and we did a podcast on this i like maybe four years ago now i don't even know but but when you look at that it normally comes down to people who finish third or fourth because it's always and like you can make the argument like where do they rank then in the best players ever including winners and they're ahead of some winners because like nobody's going to argue that if Sari fields wins micronesia she's not one of the top five winners of all time you know, but but she finished third, and this time before yeah. that, she finished fourth. And even you in Africa, you finished third. Fair play in Pearl Islands finishes third. Sester Nino and Amazon. It's like it was that third place or fourth place position where it's like you didn't get to face the jury. Had you faced them, you probably beat whoever you're sitting next to. But like, so you kind of have like that, like, ooh, what would have been, you know, like those third place, fourth place people have that, what would have been kind of uh, aura yeah. around them. Yeah. Yep. You know, so, so it will be interesting to see, like, I'm curious who's going to come out of the gate, like guns blazing. Who's mm -hmm. just going to be like, I'm ready to go. I want to take this game by the horns and I want to run it from start to finish. Kind of like what Rob did do 
in all stars where he was, you know, from day one, he was like, there's no target on my back. I'm getting rid of Rob Cisternino and I'm taking these people that I was on a tribe with and I'm just going to run the game with them. Yep. And I wonder who's going to be the person who's going to try to do that. Cause if you can do that on this all winter season, no matter what you did in your first season, I think that that proves like, yeah, you're one of the, you're, you're the best, one of the best, if not the best. Yeah. And we all want to see that. I mean, we're, we have, there are high expectations with an all winter season and they better not disappoint us because a lot of us have been saying, God, this could either be really compelling television or it could be the most boring season ever. Um, but it's up to them and what they bring. And I hope I hope that they just go that they go guns blazing, that they go in hard from day one. How do you responsibility to entertain us? Yeah. yeah. How do you think it's gonna go? In in your heart of hearts, how do you think? <laughs> Um, I think there's going to be a few players that are going to play hard at first. I think Rob will be one of them. Um, it's you know it's become his his brand, and and I think that he you know he's well aware that there's going to be expectations and that people will probably crucify him if he doesn't if he doesn't do that. I can see Tyson playing hard. I can see Parvin playing hard. Um, I think a new school person could come in hot just yep. because just because what we were talking about earlier how. They'll they'll feel like they have more to prove than yes. Ethan or Danny or someone kind of from an earlier season. I, I mean I, I I think Wendell's got a a really good chance, and I mm. think that Wendell um, Wendell still you know he's young. I mean it, this is a this is the oldest season ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the youngest I mean, player on this season is twenty eight years well, old. And and just to, just to give you guys perspective, when I played Africa, I was thirty eight, and I was considered an elder at thirty eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I was I was on the I was one of the olders, and now you um, would literally probably be the oldest, the oldest on a lot of seasons. Yes, you know, yes. like even at thirty eight though, you'd be like the oldest on a lot of seasons because, or yeah. like one of like the two or three oldest because most of the people are in their low thirties, low twenties. You know, that's where the age range is. And all of a sudden, you get like your forty five year old, and it's like you're ancient. Like, yeah, what? and I, and I part of me is really interested in seeing how that how that plays out because that's going to be something different, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to like that because then they won't, it, it's, it happens in all of these kind of newer seasons. There's one person who's 40. So they're basically almost dead. And then they, <laughs> everyone wants to get rid of them because they're like a challenge liability when they usually aren't, mm -hmm. they just well, don't necessarily yeah. fit in with that group. So I'm happy that at least from that perspective, it's a fairly level playing field. Yeah. 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 And, and, and one of the more interesting ones, like Julie Rosenberg, who was just on the last season, who shared her story with us about how she was supposed to be Kim Powers. Um, at yeah. least that's that's her take. She was supposed to be Kim Powers. Um, if you, she she did this whole tell all, and she was like, "I got the call for Africa. I was going to go, and all of this stuff." And she was at the age where she would have been Kim Powers from New Jersey. Julie was living in New York City, same age, same kind of look. Wow! But it's so funny because now Julie's forty six. She's playing as like the mom. She's out there. She's jacked. Like for a forty six year old woman, she is just muscle and nothing else and it's like but she's the older woman we need to watch like is she gonna be a liability in these and it's like how like how are we even she's 46 years old and she wins the first immunity challenge that sends joe anglem home like how is she a liability well, you know what is it, here's the thing i mean i'm again i'm 56 years old but i still think i could smoke some of those kids mm -hmm. out there in physical challenges i have no doubt yeah can, and can i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to be like you know not trying to boast nothing but you know you can be 56 or 46 you could still be fit mm -hmm. and that's i think that's the thing most of the time they bring in like the younger people who are really fit and then you bring in a ream where it's like oh she's just kind of like the out of shape what was it paul back in one of those first gen x where he gets like medevac to send, or almost got yeah. medevac when he's going to the <laughs> and it's like you're bringing in these older people who are so out of shape to fit that like look they're the old person yeah. when now you look at this season and you have danny boatwright who doesn't look like she's aged a day since Survivor Guatemala <laughs> and she's in her forties now. Right. You right. know, and Amber's 40. And like it's Parvity it's just so like, di yeah, Parvati is the same age as Lauren Rimmer. Alexa loves bringing that point up. Because <laughs> <laughs> like Parvati was like the the you know, she was seductive and you know, she's gonna use her appeal to get everything she wants. And Lauren Rimmer's like, I'm a fisherman and like this is what I do. Uh -huh. I like just fish. And it's like how weird it but is. Par Parvati is still smoking hot. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't changed at all. 
it's gonna be it's gonna be something. I am so excited. Parvati is the one I'm like the most excited to watch out of the old schoolers, just because oh, I'm like, it's been ten years. It's it, gonna be fun, yeah. And and you know, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, they're right now in real time. Like right now, what's the date today? It's like, June twenty sixth. Yeah, I think that they're they're, they're about to go to final. They're like three days away from final tribal right now because I think the mm. game officially, like in real time, started. I think May twenty second was when the game started. Mm -hmm. It was right yeah, after the finale, it was done. right? Yeah. Because I, I know that they're all scheduled to come home the very first week of July. Okay, that's yep. We're almost done. <laughs> so they're they are just about to go to final tribal. It's we're getting close. Uh, they're down to like final five or something now. And we're sitting, we're sitting here talking about it. It's going to get released. This is going to get released in like December and it's going to be like, Oh my God. Like, like we, we're not even close to knowing who ends up winning no, the season, like no, what's going to happen, but it's four or five days away in real time from happening. <laughs> know, brutal. It's crazy. It's weird. It's wild. It's brutal. Alexa, you want to ask Lex the all important questions because we need yes. to keep track of this for all of our guests. Okay. So we are asking everyone two questions. First is where do you think? Well, I guess we'll we'll do this for Amber, but I also want to know for Ethan too. Where do you think she will place? You can say as vague as makes the merge, as specific as ninth place. You can say family visit. Mm. Give us mm. a take. Okay, um, Amber. I'm writing I'm, this down. I'm going to say that Amber is going to make it. Well, we don't know if there's going to be family visit or not, right? I mean, that. Well, sometimes... her family's already visiting, so that's like cheating. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Boston <laughs> Rob gets. Boston <laughs> Rob gets. He gets twentieth place. Amber makes the family visit, and Boston <laughs> Rob comes running out of the do, trees. Do they get like <laughs> conjugal time if they're on different <laughs> right? tribes? It's actually right? Four children sprinting out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Amber goes pretty deep. I think um, out of twenty. I'm going to say she makes it to um, 15. Like she gets 15th or she gets like, she yeah. gets like final five. I say she, she I, she's, um, she, I don't know. Is there a difference? Well, she beat, <laughs> wait, no. So you're saying what place does she finish? She finished 15th fourth, place or fifth place? Yeah. You fifth. finish. I'm not going to give her okay, fourth. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. In yeah. fact, maybe, maybe I'll even, maybe I'll even just, um, I'll subtract one from that. 14. Okay. So sixth place, Alexa. Yeah. Six, okay. Sixth place. Yeah. Sixth and <laughs> uh, Ethan, this is the one that's going to get me into trouble because um, he may or may not listen to this. He may or may not, but you know, I mean, I would, I'd say anything I said here, I would say to his face because that's, we got that relationship and it's cool, you know, and I, we'd hug it out. Um, I would, well, like I said, I would love for him to win. Um, so, if I if I was picking what I what my hope and my dream is that he wins, but realistically speaking, um, I I don't think he's going to make the uh, the jury. Wow. Um, right. And and I would say uh, I, I I don't know that he makes it to the halfway point. Maybe just before the halfway point. So. You sound so sad saying that. <laughs> I am. I mean, I am because you are physically sad. I love him. I want. I want this for him. I would really love to see him get this. I just. I he he hasn't. Um, I haven't seen. You know, in in his, I haven't I haven't seen necessarily what he's going to bring. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to make things way different than what than what he brought mm -hmm. to uh, to All Stars in, in Africa. Well, and I and I feel like it's I feel like someone like in his position, it's this game could the new school, you know, kind of nature of it, it could chew him up and spit him out. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that I know he's wanted to do this again forever. We, we talked about it, you know, and and I I I rode the peaks and valleys of being like, yeah, I really want to do it, and then I was like, no fucking way, I'm never doing it again. And then yeah, I'd like to do this, and you know, I mean, I. Whereas he was always like, I just, I want to go back out there. I want to do this. Um, he loved it. He loved everything about it. He loved the TV part of it. He loved the famous part of it. He loved the, the game part of it. I, you know, for me, it's like, I, I love the game. I love the super competitive part of it. I love the whole challenging my body, my brain, everything. I didn't like the TV part of it. 
mm -hmm. all that much or like how disruptive it was to my family's life um and the whole the fame part of it was off-putting to me um and back then it was really different than it is now because i mean i think you guys have mentioned in previous podcasts it was like you have 30 40 million people watching it and, and people you know on every single continent except for antarctica watched it every week now um, you just and, you know the now social it's, media crazies <laughs> right and, and back when i did it there was no social media you know mm -hmm. you had the people that were really into it were on forums um but that was the extent of it you know if you wanted to converse or communicate or connect with anybody on the show you had to go to a charity event in you know omaha nebraska or wherever um or else you could never or you sent us snail mail you know a, a letter and and asked for a signed photograph i mean that was the wow. so it was a very different world back then mm -hmm. but um but you know ethan yeah ethan's always wanted it so i i really i sincerely and genuinely hope that he goes really deep in the game and ultimately i would love to see him win he's he's my horse he's the horse i'm betting on mm -hmm. um but i worry i worry about my ethan so, Alexa. So for this second question, I'm going to help you out here because you're actually not allowed to pick Ethan. So or, for, Amber. <laughs> or Amber. So who do you think is is going to win, can win, not named Ethan or Amber? Oh, we, can, okay. we, we can reread the list to you if you need. Um, <clears throat> read me. Who are the, um, can I give you a, can I give you a, a, a guy and a girl? Sure. Yeah, that um, cool. read me the read me the list of Survivor ladies again. Survivor ladies, you got Amber, Danny, Denise, Kim, Michelle, Natalie Anderson, Parvati, Sandra, Sarah, Sophie. I think that's ten. Right, I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna give you one of each. Uh, it's either gonna be Michelle or Wendell. Oh, you just you are making us happy. <laughs> this is the first first time you said Michelle's name this entire podcast, well, Lex. What took you so long? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, I mean, I, I adore Michelle. I love her. She's just the sweetest girl. I think she is incredibly shrewd and super clever. Um, she has a knack to kind of compartmentalize things and be able to be really sneaky and smart and strategic, but also make you feel like, you know, you're important and beloved. She's she is a smart and shrewd player, boy. That I, she, no idea what you just started. Uh oh. Oh, did, so, did I do did I do a bad thing, Alexa? You did a very good thing. <laughs> so, so, Lex, during Korong, I I'm from like just south of where Michelle lives. Like I grew up just south of where she lives in New Jersey. Okay. So yeah. And big fan. I inst instantly <laughs> was like, Michelle's going to win. And it got to the point where like when everybody was saying Aubrey was going to win, I just kept on saying Michelle, Michelle, people are so tired of hearing me talk about Michelle that I can't wait for season four. Well, to they're, start. They're stupid. And I hope she wins. Yeah. They're, they're, I hope they're she wins stupid. So it's not going to be, it's not, yeah. Aubrey nope. Um, yeah, nope. No, it's, I, I think Michelle is a really, really great player. Um, mm -hmm. And, and she's just a really, she is a really fantastic person to hang around with. And for me, that's like, that's half the deal. When you got to be on this island and on this beach with somebody, um, the people that are pleasant to be with and that you connect with, again, are, are like, are gold. Um, she's, she's all of that. Um, Wendell's also, he's a lovely person. Um, he is, again, also very smart. He manages to, he plays his cards close to the chest without, you know, without making you feel like he's being cagey or dodgy. Um, I think he's a, and I think they're both, they're, they're both physically and mentally really set up to, to win this game. They have the new school advantage, which I think is an advantage. Um, especially if it's a new school, you know, survivor, you know, with idols and whatnot. Um, so, and, and the, the biggest advantage I think new school players have is that they can be really, um, they can play without, you know, without their emotions getting in the way, which mm -hmm. is, a, is a handicap for us old schoolers. Um, not all of us, but most of us. Um, but those guys are like, they're, they're new generation. It's, it's like they're biologically wired slightly differently than we were. Um, and that they can be just so kind of detached is, is a great asset to have in the game. So <clears throat> I'm saying Wendell and Michelle. 
There Wendell, you go. Or, Wendell or Michelle. Wendell. And it, well, how wonderful would it be to see a final two? Well, if it's a final, if it's a final two of Wendell and Michelle, Lex, who you got? Um, wow. Oh, that's so situational. That's, I like how yeah, I tricked him into yeah, to you, giving a one person answer. You, <laughs> you did kind of trick me. Um, well, then I'm going to say Michelle. Okay, there you go. Hey, Lex, we have the same winner pick for Survivor season. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling officially, you, officially, my winner is the winner I'm picking is Ethan. Yeah, well, there that's that's okay. There you go. Well, we have the same winner pick if we can't pick Ethan. Yes, there you go. There you go. <laughs> With that um, caveat. Yes, big cat. Although Michelle was going to be my winner pick either way, and the internet is going to hate me during season forty every week. Excited. Michelle lasts well, one every week. She keeps going. Everybody better hope she gets voted out. Well, you know, they, they, I'm start wearing like hats and shit. Yeah, if they <laughs> if she doesn't, then they can all suck it. Now, yeah. Ale Alexa, I get and now I, I know I know who Phil's uh, pick for winner is, but I get. Tit for tat, I get to ask you who, who your pick is. So you mentioned Michelle and Wendell. Wendell is the only winner pick that preseason that I've ever guessed right. And I wow. love Wendell. I am a huge Wendell fan. So when you said both Michelle and Wendell, I was like, this couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> You're pandering to us. This is too easy. Fair wow, play warned him. No, I'll, I'll tell you, that's, that's dumb luck. That has nothing to do with anything. Um, love him, but I feel like he might be a a bit obvious he mm. was so smooth and he is and he is he's he's new so maybe people would target him but now that we're actually talking about it this is the first conversation that we've had where i actually think being new school is an advantage for a while yeah. i thought it was a disadvantage but just for the sake of numbers and like just kind of, they've they've played they've seen idols where there right. are people coming out who've never seen idols and yeah, they, there's not nearly as much title. there's not nearly as much as going to make their head spin whereas exactly. the, the old school would be like oh my god i've i've got you know you know i've got a what what is that called when you uh when you're when you're off balance um, oh vertigo i've got vertigo this game's <laughs> giving me vertigo right but the thing is i also think that um this is my cat suki hello, hello cat <laughs> say hi, hi um won't even look at us <laughs> i think that um there are also for people like wendell or people like you know Wendell or Michelle or Parvati, you know there are plenty of players that are so much firewood to throw in the fire. Mm -hmm. um, when you've got people like, uh, oh God, I'm I'm blanking out right now, but is it is it Ben? Ben, yeah. Yep. I mean, so many so many excuses could be made for why. Yeah, put him put his name down. Mm -hmm. or or rob your boss rob or sandra there, there's there's so much cordwood to throw in the fire before they've got to go in um if you can just you know be smooth about it um there's people to hide behind and there's people that you could you know really easily kind of convince other players that you're aligning with maybe for this tribal council yeah put put that name down before you put mine down and mm -hmm. and honestly it, it becomes i think much as much as it becomes harder to stay in the game when the numbers dwindle in some ways if you play the game right it becomes easier to stay in the game longer because you have if you've if you've done your job of cementing yourself socially to some people that really care about you like jet that genuinely care about you it's it's really hard for them to write your name down so you just need you know if you can if you can solve that problem and stick around long enough like the halfway point maybe to jury um to where people really feel like they're working with you and you're working with them well then it's you know it's your game to fuck up yeah no that's that's a really i love that because like that's when i'm picking my winner i'm looking at i don't see michelle going pre-jury unless she gets swap screwed which almost happened to her in co <laughs> but that's the only way i see her going pre-jury yep. um you know nick wilson's another one i kind of only see him going pre-jury if he gets swap screwed because I think he's just that social and I think he's that good socially. But then there's other players where it's like Tyson needs a miracle. Parvati's probably going to need yeah. a miracle. So like, it's harder to pick one of those players. Cause how yeah. are they going to get there? Michelle, right. I can already see getting halfway through the game. Now she just has to get through the last part of it where she's not going to be seen as a physical threat. Nobody's going to be looking at her as too much of a strategic threat. Just go win the damn game. Yeah. And it'll be really interesting to see. And I, I mean, I, one of the things I always check, you know, on an ongoing basis is like, how did everyone vote at tribal? And um, and it was especially true. It was almost a hundred percent of the time true in the old school games. Is the people that 
were always voting with you know the group of people that actually got to get rid of the person in other words you know the people that were in power um were always the ones that went deep you know it was yeah. the people in, and you, you could just kind of track someone's trajectory by you know were you was were you in every tribal council were you voting with the block of people that actually got rid of somebody and if you were then you're going to go deep that's not as true nowadays because it's because of all the wild cards and all the the things that Survivor decides to throw into this game that that frankly just screwed up and muddy the water, whether it be idols or gimmicks or idol smashers or islands or whatnot. Um, you can't use that, but it still holds, I think, to a certain extent true. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where, you know, are there gonna be people that are gonna be jumping around or are there gonna be groups that we can that we can track over the you know the course of the game to kind of stick together and always vote together because that, mm-hmm. that that tells you so much that's that's the litmus test right there i'm hoping we get the jumping <laughs> you want a lot of jumping i think when I, I think i'm so fearful of pre-game relationships it's, that i uh, want jumping yeah. but i don't want but you're right i don't want chaos and i hate to follow i i I frankly i've I've been guilty of it in the past i've also been guilty of like totally lying in the past on pre-game stuff but i do hate as a rule i hate pre-game before anything happens when people are still at home i hate when people play the game before Mm -hmm. the game and i've i've discussed this with so many other players you know speculating or in situations where um you know, I may or may not have been asked to go back and decided to go back or not. Um, but I don't like it when people, because I mean, frankly, I think that the game is going to be what it is. When we all hit the beach together, all bets are off. And every, you know, you, I, I, I almost feel like unless you got something like when I did, what I did with Tom before All Stars was I knew for a fact that he and I were just as we were locked and loaded in Africa, I knew that I could go into all stars, we'd be certainly on different tribes, and I knew that I could count on them. That if we made the tribe together and it was within our power to, to work together and do something, that I was locked and loaded and he was locked and loaded coming to me. That was just never a question. Um, but there's very few people that you can do that with because people are so well, I mean, it's the only one person can win, so people are just really um, you can't you, just, it's, you can't count on, on very many people, but you know, I I had. Before I did All Stars, somebody that I had never really talked to called me out of the blue and wanted to know if I wanted to have an alliance with them. That's very um, forward. And <laughs> yeah, and and it was Colby Donaldson. <laughs> <laughs> was wondering if you were going to tell us the name. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got I got nothing to lose. And then you end up on the tribe with him. Nobody's the boss of me. I can say whatever. <laughs> but no, he he he. You know, um, we all knew that he probably knew all the people that were going out there ahead of time because. You know, he and Probst were pretty tight. Mm. And, um, and you know, Colby and I had never really talked. We'd, we'd even done charity events together, and he never really had time of day for me. He was just too cool or something, and I was just not, like, his guy. And I, you know, I never took really offense of it. I had plenty of people that were my people. Um, but I always thought he was like, I'm like, okay, well, you're kind of a little bit of a dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, all, that's all fine. That's good. Um, but then here we, we've got all-stars, the – we all know that people are being called because we've been called. And out of the blue, he calls me and says, hey, Lex, how's it going? And I said, oh, it's good. How, how are you doing? He's all, well, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, so I was wondering, you know, how, how do you feel about alliances? Hmm. Well, he moves fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, <laughs> there was there was no um, courting. There was no <laughs> dinner. <laughs> um, no, it, it he, you know, he was, he, he cut straight to the, straight to the, the chase and, um, and, and he, you know, and he, he did mention, he says, yeah, you know, I heard you might've gotten a call and he says, you know, I've gotten a call and don't tell anybody. I said, okay, you know, your secret's safe with me. Um, and he says, well, how do you feel about alliances? I said, well, I think alliances are great. <laughs> and he says, well, well, how would you feel about an alliance? With you and me, two of you know, two challenge beasts, and we could really, we could really clean up out there. I said, Colby, that is a great idea. <laughs> I love it. And of course, with absolutely zero intention of ever. Angie didn't. Of ever holding to that, <laughs> ever, ever, because he was 
he was outside of Richard Hatch, you know, he was number Colby was number one on my list mm -hmm. for a million different reasons. But I knew I had to get rid of him because he, you know, challenge beast, yes, social, yes. Also beloved, mm -hmm. beloved by Survivor, beloved by CBS, those kinds of people. You've got to you've got to make sure you shank them early because if they go too deep, then things can mysterious things can happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this guy cannot, this guy cannot make it to cannot make it to where it's individual challenges anymore. I've got to get rid of him while it's still tribe challenges and it's just us. So yeah, he says. And here's the thing that it's just so strange that um, because I thought the first thing I thought at that point was, I'll bet that we're going to be on the same tribe. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wonder if he knows. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> um, because you learn after you've played the game a couple of times, you 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 learn to be a little bit um, suspicious of there's there aren't really a lot of coincidences. Mm -hmm. um, and and I thought, God, I wonder if he's going to be on my tribe. I, and then sure enough, you know, and, and I told him, Yeah, we're we're all in. And he checked with me a couple of times after that. You know, Hey, are we good? I'm all, we are so good. And then sure enough, you know, I, we showed up in Miami, um, which is where we all, we all took off each tribe met at different times, I think in the Miami airport. And that's where we took off to go to Panama. And, you know, we all, there were six of us that all kind of showed up at the same time, landed at Miami at the same time. And it was Colby and Hatch and Kathy. It was my tribe. And I'm all, damn it. He's on my tribe. I know. Mm -hmm. I know that this is my tribe because those were the people that we traveled to on a flight together. We were sequestered together. We traveled to Panama together, and then they kept us in like a Ponderosa style place where we had our four days of press junkets and whatnot beforehand. They kept the three tribes. We didn't see the other tribes, but we were all together. And you know, while we were there on on you know in the Pearl Islands during our press junket, you know, he kept checking the hair. Are we still good? He's on. You know, I'm thinking you, me, and Hatch, we got this. We got this. I'm all, dude, I am locked and loaded. I'm your, I'm your boy. And and he loved it. I told him what he wanted to hear. He loved it. And As you're over there getting ready to align with Shean and, and Kathy and Jenna, oh, you're like, goodbye. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> that was what I talked about earlier in the podcast when I said there, there have been situations where I just took so, – I relished and just – enjoyed and just delighted in shanking and just mm -hmm. getting rid of somebody. And that was probably the most delicious one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say the number one in knowing what happened now. Yeah. <laughs> the number one and number two that you wanted to vote out of the game thought that you were going to work with them and they're both on your tribe to start. It doesn't get much better than oh, that. It was, a, it was a delight. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, lost in all of this, Alexa never gave an authentic winner pick. So Alexa, did you pick Wendell? Did I, you I, pick I, Wendell? Do I, do I need to do that right now? Oh, Lex asked you. Well, I, nice I, I, it okay. doesn't have to be your, you can change your mind later, but like right now, if you had to pick somebody, like you told me, you know, no notice, you have to pick somebody who, who do you think is going to win? I think for a girl or a, a woman i would pick danny boatwright okay. i'm a big danny boatwright fan and i think even though she's in a big quotes here older like older school season maybe that's not big quotes she i feel like she's been around like i feel like she knows she'll fit right in with nullifiers and edge of whatever so i think <laughs> in that situation she'll be fine and i think she's kind of like michelle in that she's not threatening she's like the not the original michelle but she, people aren't going to be threatened by her. There's so yeah. many people are going to be afraid of poverty, not afraid of Danny. Yeah. I think yeah. guys, I think oh, if it, if it wasn't Wendell, I would say Jeremy, but I think Jeremy's even more obvious than Wendell. <laughs> Jeremy is like perfect. So I'll still go with Jeremy. Okay. All also, right. I'm going to say Danny and Jeremy. This might be adjusted by the time people actually hear this in January. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. It's it's hard, but but you know, I mean, maybe we're sitting here right now, and with five days left in the game, the final four: Michelle, Wendell, Jeremy, and and uh, how and awesome Danny, would that be? You know what I mean? And Ethan, there you go. We got five days. We left. would we would there. be we would be like Survivor, you know, s s fortune tellers, like 
soothsayers, psychics. Yeah. Everybody we've said in this podcast is actually the final five, and and it's obvious from day one, and everybody's <laughs> going to think heavily we, spoiled. We were getting right? calls from Fiji. Hey, we can mon <laughs> we can monetize that somehow, right? Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's the goal. Well, we need to get we'll have your three statues million. of us on the island. Oh, no, that's what no, I want. No, 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 that's... you don't. No, Phil, trust me, you don't want that. Would you like me to Photoshop your face onto one? of the statues. That's something that I've been doing for people. Alexa did it for T-Bird. <laughs> I did it for T-Bird and, and I did it for the two of us. You can, you can Photoshop my face on a smaller statue just next to yours. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we, we said we were going to do that with Fair Play because he was complaining and we said, we're, don't worry, we're going to get the big one. We're going to get the big one for Hatch and Tina because he was mad they weren't on the season. And then a little baby Fair Play one right in between. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm I'm actually kind of, and I know that this will be controversial, but I'm kind of sore that Heidek's not on this season. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. Bummed. because I'll tell you what I think, and I've always said this. I've been asked this so many times in the past, like the way gone past, back when you know I actually still had juice and you know my stock was still up. Um, I always thought he was when asked. I thought he was one of the best winners to I ever agree. play the game. That guy literally just steamrolled everybody and he did it with such impunity and swagger and just cocksuredness it was like almost it was like watching a house catch on fire and burn with everyone in it while everyone's eating dinner they're like everything's wonderful isn't the meatloaf great <laughs> and meanwhile the house is like burning and Heidek was that fire he was like he was just doing all the stuff in front of everybody and no one had a clue. I mean, that guy just was, we've never seen anyone else play the game quite like that. And I, I'd have to argue where, where people say that Hatch really did that the first season, how remarkable it was. Well, that was a bit like shooting fish in a barrel because most of the, no one had ever heard of the show, knew the concept. They were all babies, like literally babies. But a lot of the players were also like, they were there, having fun on an island and thinking this is kind of a cool vacation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't a lot of alpha competitive, like, you know, we're, most of us are pathologic, pathologically competitive, like monopolies of blood sport in my house. <laughs> um, you know, you, you pull back a, a stump if, if, you, if you make somebody unhappy. And so Hatch, I think, I think Hatch, you know, he clearly just ran the game, but it was a game that was pretty easy to run. Heidek ran the game when it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, Good point. Would, how fun would it be to have a guy that is that hardcore and that ruthless from the old school that nobody has even thought about because he's been out of the public eye completely and to have him back in the game when most of these new schoolers probably don't even know anything about him or if they do, it's like he's more of a he's become a footnote, which is not fair. But Heidek, I think Heidek, when it comes to winners, Heidek is the real deal. And he would have done well too, I think. Yes, I think so too. Totally. The other one that I'm bummed about is Chris. Because I think Chris has the most he's got the best story. I what's up? Oh yeah, no, Vanuatu yeah. Chris. Vanuatu Chris. I have to yeah, now we have to justify okay. that because well, been more but I, I knew exactly who you were talking about. Yeah, and, um, not Chris Underwood. And, and I and I, I love I love him to pieces. Um, yeah. I, I I think I know for pretty much fact he wouldn't have done it. No, I don't think I don't think he would have done it because because he's one of the people like I always think his story is one of the most fascinating underdog. Should have been the first person voted oh. out. Goes on to win, and he did it so well that and, I would love to see him play in a season like. Yes, that. and he was a guy that um did the impossible. I mean, it was one of the only times in the history of the game where there was actually a a really legitimate and valid woman's alliance that stuck together mm -hmm. um and he was in the middle of all that and somehow he beat all he made it through all of this these you know these women that were stuck like glue and he beat all of them and mm -hmm. I, I i don't i still don't really quite know how he did it but he did it yeah he's He's that guy. If you're live betting a sporting event, he's the team that always is getting like a thousand to one odds. <laughs> right <laughs> like from day one, all the way through. He was supposed to be voted out day one. He's supposed to be, and then he's supposed to get voted out at swaps, and he's supposed to get voted out at the merge. And every guy goes home, and it's six to one, and 
somehow he wins the game. And yeah. it's like, wait, but how he, did I just make my money? He's, he's <laughs> again, he's a super sweet guy. Mm-hmm. He's the sweetest guy. And, and again, you know, I think that he made a connection with those people out there, all of those people that was genuine. It was real. And you know that again, it's the secret sauce. Yeah. I think, I yeah. think he had a lot of friends. Yeah. Cause he's a very friendly guy. Yeah, those are the two I'm the most bummed about because they always yeah. appear at the top of my winner rankings if I'm if I'm forced to rank, and uh, I was hoping to see them. Yes. Really yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm I'm with you on that. Um. All right. Well, do you have anything else you want to throw in here about Amber, Ethan, or any other little any other little thing you got here? Um. God, I think I, I, I feel like you guys tapped me out. I'll probably <laughs> as soon as. As soon as I, I hit quit off of this Google Hangout, I'll probably oh no, there was that one thing I had to share and I didn't. But. Well, I know you and Colby have had a twenty year alliance at this point, so we will have to <laughs> we will have to dive into that a little bit more. Maybe uh, maybe another time. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah well if you're tapped out i mean this was so much fun this is definitely gonna be our longest one of these don't tell everybody else that we gave you special treatment here um <laughs> as i pump into the microphone but yeah no this was this was fantastic i love talking about both of them this is the amber podcast but like i said 90 percent ethan 10 percent amber well this was this was okay. super fun and um you know I'm, i send my love out to both amber and ethan i hope that they both do very well in the game i you know it's going to be super fun to watch them. And honestly, this was such a good time to chat with you guys. And, you know, you can, you can hit me up anytime. I'm happy. I'm happy to jump on. If you guys want to want to hash out or dish some survivor, I'm down. You, we definitely will be. There is no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> I'm I'm putting your Twitter on speed dial. If that's <laughs> <laughs> we are already messaging you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alexa, if you want to take it home, let's do it. All right. So this, I mean, this was a blast, not just talking about like previous seasons and season 40, but this was just a really cool philosophical, like survivor discussion too. just like what makes a good winner, what makes a good player. So that was really fun. And I hope all of you guys enjoyed that. Um, I have no idea how many social media followers or YouTube followers we have, because this is six months from when we're actually recording this, but (laughs) thank you all for your patronage. Please keep listening to us. Please keep subscribing. Become a patron at patreon.com backslash startup specialists. Thank you, Lex, for coming on. We had a blast chatting with you. At this point, we've already chatted like 17 times by the time people have heard this one. (laughs) So you're actually going to be sick of him by the time this gets released. Um, but we'll be back at some point with our next season 40 winner, winner retrospective. And I hope everyone has a great night.